The Atlanta Braves have made headlines in the past few years as the model franchise in baseball with their smart business of buying out their young stars pre-arb and arbitration years early to keep them a few years longer than the original 6 or 7 they get before becoming free agents. They've done this with Ronald Acuna Jr., Ozzy Albies, Matt Olson, and many more. But people tend to forget this isn't a new trend in baseball and has been done many times before. For instance, back in spring training of 2018, the Phillies were certain their young prospect Scott Carey would be around for the long haul. So they signed him to a six-year $24 million deal before he even stepped foot on a major league diamond. And now, six years later, he has not had an at-bat in the MLB in over a thousand days. So what happened to him? How did he go from being the next budding star and face of the Philadelphia Phillies to being just a non-roster invitee to spring training in 2024? Well, sit back, relax, and let me explain his rather curious career. Kingery was a high draft pick back in 2015, being taken in the second round, but stumbled during the early parts of his professional career with two lackluster campaigns stretched between single A plus and double A. It wasn't until 2017 when things finally started to go right for the young prospect. In 132 games across double A and triple A, he scored 103 runs, homered 26 times, knocked in 65 runs, as well as stealing an impressive 29 bags to go along with a slash line which included an OPS nearing 900. His stellar 2017 display caught the attention of scouts all across the league, which was confirmed in this article posted on June 23, 2017, titled Scout Compares Phillies Prospect Scott Kingery to Dustin Pedroia. He even went as far to say the Phillies have a perennial all-star on their hands. And the Phillies also believed this. That's why they opened their wallets and handed Kingery a staggering six-year $24 million deal during spring training of 2018. An incredible sum of money for a player who had never touched Major League soil. Oil. In fact, at the time, it was the largest contract ever given to a player before reaching the majors. But why did the Phillies do this? Well, when a player reaches six years of service time, they become free agents and are free to sign anywhere. The idea of extending a player right off the bat is to give him more money during his pre-arbitration years in exchange for keeping him a few years after his six years of service time are up for a cheaper cost rather than signing him to a mega deal with a high annual value once he touches free agency. And in Kingery's case, after the original original six years led up, the Phillies had team options from 2024 to 2026, which would take the deal to nine years and around $65 million. So if he did turn into the next Dustin Pedroia, then the team could have him stick around for an extra three years for well below free agent value. But this of course did not happen, and he faced adversity all throughout his career starting in 2018. Kingery made the Phillies directly out of camp as expected once he signed the deal, and looked poised to be a regular playing in multiple key positions. And in the first game, he got off to a great start with the bat as he went 2 for 5 in his debut, then in the game following he had another 2 hit performance, this time both going for extra bases. Through the club's first 10 games of the season, he lived up to the hype producing 5 extra base hits including 2 homers, 6 RBIs, and a slash line which included an OPS of 872. This however was the highest mark it would be for the rest of the season. To finish out the month of April, he hit just above the Mendoza line at 210 and sported an OPS south of 600 with 20 20 strikeouts and zero homers. At the time, this was merely looked at as a slump. After all, how many times have we seen top prospects struggle in their first taste in the big leagues? Take Mike Trout for example. His 2011 season did not strike, hey, this man is going to become a perennial superstar in the minds of anybody. But that's exactly what happened. And as for Kingery, that's precisely what most critics were hoping would happen after he finished the season with just 8 homers, 35 RBIs, a mere 226 average, and a 605 OPS. But let's hone in on that slash line for a minute. Of players with at least 475 plate appearances during the season, his 226 average ranked 11th lowest in baseball, nestled between Jamer Candelario and Evan Gaddis. Now, as for the OPS, again for players with at least 475 plate appearances, his 605 figure ranked third worst in baseball behind Chris Davis and Alcides Escobar. Not bad company to be alongside at all if you're talking about the 2015 season when Chris Davis slugged 47 home runs and had a slash line with an 
an OPS over 900. Or Alcides Escobar, who is busy leading the Kansas City Royals to their first World Series title since 1985. If only that were the case, because Kingery was a massive letdown. His negative .6 war was well off what most were expecting of him, which only meant the lights would become even brighter during the 2019 season. Now, if you're not familiar with Scott Kingery, you'd probably expect the story to continue to go in a negative direction, but he actually found decent success in 2019. During the offseason, he got straight to work and trained with Aaron Judge, who had this to say about him before the season started. What I saw from Scott this past offseason was hunger. He was putting the work in the cage with me late. I saw a young player who was like, I didn't like what happened last year, and I'm not going to let it happen again. When you have a guy who has the talent but also has the want and the hunger like that, it's a rare combo. And Judge is definitely one to talk about understanding when a player can offer more than he had in years past. After all, he's been looked at as this big power hitter his entire life, yet never topped 20 home runs until his age 25 season, when he of course broke the single season home home run record for rookies with 52. He knew he could perform to that level, it was only a matter of time, and while Kingery is not a prolific power hitter, he knew he could become effective in his own way too, which he did display. In 2019, he featured in 126 games, 21 less than the last season because of a hamstring issue that took him out from mid-April to mid-May, but he was able to surpass all of his 2018 totals with an increase in doubles, homers, and RBIs, as well as posting a slash line with an improvement of almost 100 40 points on his slugging percentage and 180 on his OPS. I'll digress and say these numbers are nothing out of this world, but they are very respectable and saw him produce 2.5 war for the season, a huge improvement from his negative 0.6 figure from just the year prior. If the Phillies could get production like that out of him for just 4 million a year, that's an absolute steal, but if is the key word here. The 2020 season was difficult for many players, all for the same reason. The coronavirus shut down the players' ability to train with their coaches, forced the league into a shortened 60-game season, and the players had to wear masks everywhere as well as keep their distance from their teammates. All in all, this piled up to create one of the strangest seasons to watch in MLB history and caused many players to have down years. For example, Jose Altuve saw a dramatic dip in all areas of his slash line from 2019, including almost a 300-point decrease in OPS. This, of course, can be due for many reasons. For starters, a 60-game season is just a sprint, meaning one slump and your season's totals will be ugly, but also because a lot of players got sick. A study posted just recently titled Prevalence of COVID-19 and Long on COVID and collegiate student athletes from spring 2020 to fall 2021, a retrospective survey found that research on athletes has shown that long COVID, in particular cardiac symptoms, can occur and that the physiological impact of COVID-19 including on heart rate lasts two to three months on average. Two to three months was practically the whole MLB season, meaning if a player got sick, they were screwed. This unfortunately happened to Kingery. While he didn't contract the virus during the season, he got it a few weeks before opening day and stated it was very difficult for me to breathe. I think that's partially due to the fact that the shortness of breath is still kind of lingering. He also faced the typical headaches, body aches, fever, chills, the loss of smell, the loss of taste, and fatigue from the virus. This could have very well have obstructed his ability to play the way he wanted to, and he looked a shell of himself from the year prior and even from his underwhelming rookie campaign, which says a lot about how much he struggled. Of players with at least 110 plate appearances, his 159 average was 5th lowest in the league, and his 5'11 OPS was 3rd worst. All in all, it was a season to forget for Kingery, but if there's any season to give a player a pass on, it was 2020. As mentioned, star players like Jose Altuve even looked horrible at the plate, it, it was just a strange season. That's why it felt as though the hype surrounding Kingery entering 2021 was just as high as it was heading into 2019. 2021 was one of my favorite seasons I've watched in that MLB since 2016. To me, it just felt refreshing. As a Blue Jays fan, witnessing my team succeed once again with star players like Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, and Marcus Simeon lighting up scoreboards every single game, and not to mention this was the year Shohei Otani put everything on display and had arguably the greatest single season in MLB history with his 40 46 home runs and 318 ERA in 23 starts. But as for Kingery, and what was supposed to be his redemption year to prove 2019 was not a fluke, rather the norm of his production, he found trouble once again, featuring in just 15 games, managing to get just one hit in 19 at-bats. 
The cause for this, a torn labrum in his right shoulder, which caused him to undergo surgery in mid-July, which kept him out until the following season. It was at this time when the Phillies organization was starting to lose faith in him and outrighted him to AAA for the 2022 season. Now, as a man who had 324 games under his belt at the major leagues, you'd expect him to go to AAA and pounce on all the less seasoned pitchers, but it was actually him who was preyed upon. In 95 games, he had just 7 homers, 34 RBIs, and a pedestrian slash line, as well as 108 strikeouts. That's more than one per game. He outlined the cause for his poor play in the offseason, stating, I tried to work on stuff last year during the season after not swinging a bat really for a full year because of the surgery. You come in and now you're facing 97 to 98 miles per hour, and I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel right. Get back in the cage, start working on some stuff, try to take it into the game the next day, and then that wouldn't work. Well, no, it didn't work, you're facing 98. At this point, Kingery seemed angry and rightly so. He felt he was pushed to come back sooner than he should have, and he wasn't able to perform up to his best ability. That's why he got to work once again in the offseason leading up to the 2023 season, and once again he was able to turn heads. During spring training of 2023, Kingery went to big league camp with zero expectations surrounding him, which honestly can be a good thing. When you have no expectations, it's up to yourself to remind others of what you're capable of, and that's exactly what he did. Albeit it was just spring training, but he posted great numbers. Because gone was the uppercut swing promised to bring more homers into his repertoire, the Phillies coaches pushed onto him as a young prospect, and back was a more neutral swing. And in the 18 games he featured in, he posted a 340 average, 415 on base, 447 slugging, and a solid 862 OPS, putting himself back on the map in case the Phillies dealt with injury problems and needed someone to come fill in for 10 games. But this day never happened. Instead, he spent the entire season at AAA where he put up numbers that wouldn't get anyone excited, especially from a player who had so much big league experience. But I will hand it to him because once again he's come back to Philly Spring Training in 2024 with the exact same drive to make it back to the majors. In his first at bat of the spring, he took Nate Pearson, another failed top prospect deep, and logged another hit later in the game. It was a great start for him in what truly feels like the last chance he has with the Phillies, but let me ask you, what is the one constant from Kingery in the past six years? Because it's not his downplay or injuries, it's his drive to get better and prove to himself that he is capable of playing the game of baseball at the highest level, even though he doesn't need to. He already made the big league, something every young ball player dreams of, signed a lucrative contract to set him for life, and yet he's still out there trying to claw his way back despite not having an at-bat in the major leagues in over a thousand days. To me, that just shows how tenacious of a person he is, and that alone has earned my respect. With that being said, I wish him the best in his future endeavors around the league, and hopefully all of his hard work can finally start to pay off once again. That wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like to help the channel reach more like-minded people, as well as subscribing for multiple videos each week. Plus, you'd help us reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers. I know we're ways away from that milestone, but we just crossed the 1,000 threshold. So first off, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who's come along for the journey and has enjoyed the videos thus far. And if you have, that's a good thing because they're only going to get better and better as the months go by. With that being said, thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.